Michael Bocher Q. Uh, he is the spokesman for the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe. Thank you for joining us again, sir. Um, I, I want to get to the conditions there uh, in a moment. The numbers that you've sent are staggering. But listening to what the senator had to say, do, do you agree that that would do it, that that kind of support would do it, or do we need to see U.S. troops on the ground? Well, Papi, uh, good to be back with you. Our job really is to um, monitor the situation and establish the facts. So what we do on a day-to-day -day basis with, uh, we're coming up to 500 international monitors right now, is documenting what is going on on the ground. And then um, it's really up to others to draw conclusions or to take action. But the, one of the main things we've been doing, Poppy, is documenting also the very, very um, big impact on the civilian population. In the mm -hmm. setup piece, you mentioned the uh, horrific attack on the bus in Volnovaja. Uh, 12 to 14 people dead, many injured. And it's just a reminder of how civilians, innocent civilians, are getting uh, caught up in the conflict. So what we'd said um, just a few days ago, our chief monitor, Ambassador Apakan, it's time for all sides to, uh, max to exercise maximum restraint, restraint and also to uh, withdraw of heavy weaponry and that weapons need to be stopped fired. So I, I, because there was this agreement in, in September and then another one uh, packed in December and they seem to have fallen apart. I mean, when you talk about the worsening humanitarian situation on the ground there, your organization says 5 million people have been impacted. At least 4,800 have died. Over 10,000 have been wounded, a million displaced. It is staggering, especially for something that, frankly, is just not in the headlines right now in the United States, perhaps as much as it should be. What, what can you guys do to help? Well, what we do to help, for example, uh, Papi, is we negotiate, for example, temporary mini ceasefires, which we did recently when, um, you know, along the front lines, the villages are being very, very heavily shelled. So these temporary ceasefires allow repair crews to come in because, you know, many, many villages are without uh, power, without heating, and also for uh, humanitarian aid to get in. We now are seeing um, WFP, the World Food Program of the UN, coming in with a program as well as UNDP. But the OCE has long since seen itself as kind of the early warning uh, signal for this area because you're right, it does tend to fall out of the headlines. And the worst thing that could happen right now, Papi, is for the international to community, community to avert its gaze from the mm -hmm. conflict in Ukraine. And that's another reason why we're increasing the number of our monitors. We're going up to 500. And by the way, um, a little over 10% of those are Americans. And um, some of them, for example, are former detectives, law enforcement, military. And we're um, uh, protecting them with uh, things like armored vehicles, with flag jackets. We are an unarmed civilian mission. The dangers are very real, but we are going to stay on the ground as long as possible to report exactly what is going on on the ground. Yeah, I mean, this has been going on for months and months now, really since that escalation in April. And you, you guys have been on the ground the entire time. Thank you for the work that you and all the other monitors are doing and for joining us this evening. Michael, we appreciate it.